a spiritual being doesn't operate via the words of destruction and death or destroying. The way we think in this dimension, God had to bring in and create a separation to come. These are spiritual laws. So we are interdimensional beings. That's why you cannot have a memory of what happened. What is revelation about your call? It's simply discover or remembering the conversation you had with God. Go with me to Revelation chapter number 22 verse 2. In the middle of its streets and either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each yielding its fruit every month. Verse 14, listen to verse 14. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. Did you exist before you were born? For whom he foreknew, progi nosco, which speaks of a prognosis and a gnosco, a knowing. That is why we get the word foreknew. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined. So there's predestination. But before there's a predestination, there's a foreknowledge. So hold on, these are two separate and two different situations that takes place before birth. The first one that is taking place is what we call foreknew, foreknowledge, a prognosis, a relational knowledge. Even before you were born, before the creation of this world, before creation itself, he had a conversation with you. He foreknew you. So the word foreknew is God had a foreknowledge, a prognosis knowledge about us. Then he predestined. The word predestined means he created a destiny for us, a destination. And then we were sent on that assignment. You were sent on this earth for a mandate, an assignment, a purpose. No military officer, no military general sent somebody on an assignment without that person knowing what the assignment is. So when you discover your destiny and purpose on this earth, it's because you already knew it. You just had to discover it now because you are a spiritual person who is experiencing a natural disposition, if I can put it like that. Everyone has the ability to decide, even though God knew in his foreknowledge and his predestination. So people are like, okay, but if God knew we were sin, why doesn't he save us? He did. God knew in his foreknowledge in his predestination that you were going to sin and therefore he created his son before the foundations of this world to bring in a discourse god knew everything in his omniscience if there was predestination or pre-election to salvation there would be no need to preach the gospel so just as Esau willfully chose to give up his birthright every single one of us have a choice to accept the message to repent and be baptized very very simple well this is an interesting topic to cover today <laughs> I came across this video recently and watched it actually several weeks ago, and I've had other topics I've covered, but I wanted to talk about this and to touch on it a bit because of the uh, premise of what Leon Dupree, who's the voice you just heard, talking in this short clip that he played on his own YouTube channel called Existence Before Birth, The Truth. He uh, expounds on, based on different verses, why he believes and teaches people that we actually pre-existed before our birth. And I got to be honest, listening to this, it was as if I was hearing someone twist the scripture like Twizzlers. I mean, I was listening to passages and thinking, I don't think that's what that means. And he's using and appealing to Hebrew and Greek meanings. And a lot of times, many of us, myself included, we don't have a full comprehension of what those things mean. So when we hear someone begin to expound on that, and we begin to hear someone use the terms and appeal to Greek and Hebrew that we immediately think, oh, well, they must know what, what they're saying here. The other thing that concerned me, too, was he was saying things that did not align with the traditional belief of Christianity and the things that are found in Scripture. And in fact, it actually agreed with some other religious beliefs that we'll talk about, touch on a little bit here today. Now, as always, this is not going to be an exhaustive episode. As I normally point out, this episode, along with all the others, is merely to talk about some of the things that are addressed or taught in the hyper-charismatic or New Apostolic Reformation or in the charismatic in general, and to talk about them and have some sort of discussion and to look at Scripture, because Scripture is referenced quite a bit. And I want to steer you back to some good sources that may help provide some better understanding of some of the passages that Leon is going to bring up today in this episode. So the question is, did we pre-exist with God before we were born? Let's listen to Leon today and let's see what scripture has to say on the matter. 
Hi there, and welcome to the Love Six Scribe podcast, where we talk about biblical truths, current topics, and where we grow in loving the Word and loving the one who is the Word, Jesus Christ. I am Dawn Hill, and I am the Love Six Scribe. We're going to be listening to some clips today, as I said, from Leon Dupree, who is a self-professing prophet in South Africa. His testimony, just to kind of give you a little bit of understanding, he professes that he was a former drug addict. He had a radical encounter with Jesus Christ, and now he pastors multiple campuses in South Africa. And you probably heard him in some of these other episodes that I've played. For example, he's affiliated with the Demon Slayers, with Daniel Adams, and he's had some rather questionable things that's happened in the past that people have addressed. For example, several years ago, there were clips that came out from a video that he did of some teaching of sorts where he claimed that he could leave his body and go into the room and see what his wife is doing and that he could go into other people's homes that were watching, essentially, and to see what they were doing. He has since uh, apologized for that and renounced that teaching. So when I saw this video, I immediately wanted to watch it and see because I had actually seen another clip that I was able to capture several months ago from a service that he had and it was talking about increasing in your spiritual rank and what caught my attention was he was actually saying these very things about predestination and election and he was also making a comment about having a conversation with God before you were even born and that caught my attention (laughs) understandably so. And from there, that was when I found this shorter clip of him talking about this teaching specifically about pre-existence. So I want you to hear real quick before we dive into that shorter clip that he played, the shorter teaching on his YouTube channel. I want you to hear this clip that I heard from this public gathering where he talked about increasing in your spiritual rank, just so you can hear this has been said on more than one occasion. This is not some one-off that he did. This is a teaching that he teaches publicly, not just on his YouTube channel. I want you to understand predestination. Um, uh, uh, What is predestination? Here's my life. I'm standing here. I have something called the perfect will of God that is here. Then I have something called the permissible will of God that is here. And then there is something called not the will of God at all that we're going to get to now. So now I'm being born, but before I'm being born, God has a conversation with me, with my spirit. The Bible says that our spirits will go back when we die, when we pass on, we will go back, our spirits will go back to the Father of spirits. Are you guys with me? We will go back to Him, and then from there you get into eternity, whether it is Uh, eternal judgment or whether it is heaven but uh, we first the body must go back to this earth and the spirit must go back to where it's coming from it's coming from the father of spirits as dust must go back to dust this body your spirit must go back to where it's coming from before you were sent into this earth there was a discussion about your life called the yada life which is the preordained, predestined life. Please, I do not, I am not saying or advocating pre-election. I'm saying predestination. Are you guys with me? Something totally different. Because if I don't say this, then people will take it out of, out of, uh, out of uh, context. Pre-election in a Calvinistic way says that uh, some are elected to be saved and some are elected not to be saved. We don't believe that. The Bible says that it's God's will that all will be saved. Are you guys with me? It doesn't mean that all will be saved, but it is His will that all will be saved. Okay, let me just interject something right now. Uh, you don't have to be a Calvinist to get to to reject what he's getting ready to say or to question what he's getting ready to say. Let me, ju- let me just say that <laughs> right up front. And I just find it very interesting as far as people who hold to Calvinistic beliefs and Calvinistic teachings. I find it very interesting when he's referencing uh, people that believe along that lines, that he's trying to make it very clear that he doesn't believe that because it doesn't want to be a problem, but yet he doesn't see that there's a problem with what he's getting ready to say, <laughs> which is very problematic. It, it's, it's going to cause some issues, I, I believe, because Scripture just does not teach what he's getting ready to say about pre-existence. At any rate, let's keep listening to Leon. But when I speak about predestination, it is something that is now meaning not about salvation, 
So your salvation is not pre-elected, although it is because God is sovereign and that's another subject to get into. Your destination, your destiny, your purpose is pre-elected. It was discussed with God. That is why you will have deja vu. Because your spirit will remember being at a place long before it got there. It has already been there because it discussed a blueprint out for you. As sure as I'm standing in front of you today, I can preach to you. Now what we're speaking here is revelation. So this is now I'm being born. Now I'm growing up in life and I'm making a decision. So I'm walking and I'm meeting somebody. Or let me say I'm getting here to the first point of my life. And I can choose whether to go left or whether to go right. This is done, obviously, by the avenues how God speaks to us, which is by the Word of God. But there's also an inner witness, which is your, your compass for life. It's the Holy Ghost mixed with your spirit. Now you choose. Now please, this needs salvation. Okay, so now you choose. Okay, you're getting saved or something. You're stepping into the will of God. Now you're getting, let's say you get to the next chair. Okay, so he's talking about chairs. I know you can't see it on the podcast, but you will see on the video later on YouTube. He's actually having some people set up chairs in a line and having people stand in a certain place on uh, among the chairs. And he's talking about the perfect will of God versus the permissible will of God. And many of us have heard that. I, I remember hearing that many times and believing along those lines and talking about how people will step outside the will of God and I think that a lot of times, I mean, that's a whole other thing to talk about, about the sovereignty of God and understanding that a little bit better. So I would encourage you to understand that God is sovereign in the midst of all this. And I found it very interesting, too, when when Leon was saying some of these things, how he was contradicting himself within seconds of what he was saying. It was so confusing as far as God gets his will, but, you know, you can step outside of his will and God's in control, but at the same time, this can happen. And then he says, you know, God wishes that all will be saved, but we know that they, not all will be saved, but we can believe that they will all. Will. It was just very confusing how, in with a matter of seconds. But that the main thing was that caught my attention. He said there that there was a conversation had with God, meaning that you were there before you were even born and there was a conversation which led me into this video that we're going to listen to now. We're going to listen to some, some clips from it. So he did this teaching fairly recently within the past month, actually. And it was titled, as I said, Existence Before Birth, The Truth. And in the description, he says, Did you exist before birth? Revealing the truth about God's image, spirit, and predestination. Discover the law for spirits and interdimensional beings and how your will impacts your life's purpose. Join us for a mind-blowing journey of willful choice and God's preparing your body. Watch now. And then there's timestamps that you can watch this and then you can give to his ministry and ministry links and connect with him. And then there's videos you can watch that he has listed that you might be interested in, ranging from uh, deliverance to truth about sin to how to bend time. I mean, a lot of this does not sound... Uh, immediately like a, a regular biblical teaching. And in fact, there were people that commented, there were many people that agreed with what he said in this teaching, even saying, you know, you're not going to hear this in a traditional American church. And I think there's a reason for that because of what he's saying in these clips. And he's talking about how we actually existed before we were born. And I hope that uh, by the end of this, there's some a little bit better understanding and we'll even look and hear um, some video clips from a Bible teacher about Romans 8.29 because Leon references that. And so I believe that we need to look at that. Now, early on in this teaching, just to kind of summarize some things, I'm not going to play all the video, but just highlight some clips. And we already heard one already that I thought was really important to play. That was about four minutes into this where he talked about God had to bring a separation and their spiritual laws and the revelation of your call and that, that there was a conversation you had with God. And you heard him say, that's why you experienced deja vu, because you've already been at that place before. So again, appealing to this whole teaching of pre-existence. And he says about four and a half minutes in, did you exist before you were born? Citing the Hebrew word prognosko, which he says it means to know beforehand or foresee. And then he goes on to quote Romans eight twenty nine, 
saying that there is a predestination, but before this, there is a foreknowledge, and that these two are separate situations that take place before your birth. Now, prior to this, in the video, he opens up with uh, emphasizing likeness and image, and he states that there were people before Adam that existed, citing Genesis 126. And he said they had a likeness of God, but not the image of God, that Adam lost the image, but Christ restored the image. Just as a side note, that's a whole different topic about the pre-Adamite people or the pre-Adamic people that some some have this belief about. He teaches along the lines, he has a video about this too, about the pre-Adamic people, that there are three worlds, the one that was, the one that is, and the one that is to come. So he has a, a whole teaching about that. So when he's talking about that there were people that they had the likeness of God, but not the image of God, that's what he's referencing. He's referencing these pre-Adamite, pre-Adamic people that some there's some teachings about that. One person, I, if I remember correctly, that I had this teaching was a man named Dakes. His last name was Dakes, and he had a book called God's Plan for Man. And people will read into Genesis 1 in the first two verses, and they'll say there was a time span there where there were people that existed before Adam, and they were soulless, basically, and that God wiped them out with a flood, and that's why that the that there was hovering over the face of the deep. Again, this is not in the, the biblical text, but there are teachings that go along with this. But we, we, we're going to see as we go through this that sin actually and death entered through Adam. So death entered through Adam. It doesn't say anything about death entering before. And even some will appeal to in Genesis where uh, the word used to replenish, they'll say that means to refill or to fill again. And a lot of that goes back to translational things such as the King James. From my understanding, when I've looked into this, I would encourage you to do some study on that if you want to. He goes on in his teaching to say that Adam lost the image of God, but Christ restored the image. And so his uh, belief is that when Christ came and restored that image, that the authority was restored. About a minute in, Leon focuses on the body and the spirit. He says the body is formed. The spirit is created way before the body was formed. So again, we're getting into this pre-existence idea. He says that the image is a direct copy. And again, focusing on Genesis 126. He goes on to say that once the image is restored, you have authority once again, and the image of God is back on you. The second verse that he goes to is in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, and he focuses on the Hebrew word for breath. He says it means a puff and a wind, and it has divine inspiration, and that there's a life force associated with the Eastern beliefs of the chi, and he said this is associated with life that's found here also in this verse. The third verse that he references, and I'm just listing some of these off to you, uh, just for time's sake, I'm not going to look at any of these, but I always encourage you to go back to scripture and even talk to your pastor about these if you have questions. So that way you can find out some good reputable resources to go to, and so that you can have better understanding if you choose to look into these further with more extensive study. But the third verse that he mentions is Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. And I do want to read Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11 to you because it has to do with the life that's in the blood. Now, when we read Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, we see that it says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it for you on the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement by the life. And so as Leon continues to expound on this, he tells people listening that we were alive before this, before that we were given a a, a fleshly body with blood in it, a a flesh and bone. He says we were alive before this and that we are interdimensional beings. And this is why we cannot remember before we were born or even conceived. I want to play that for you so that you can hear what he said. Let's go to Leviticus 17 verse 11. It says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood and I've given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. And we're going to look now how this life was given by God and that's all good, but we were alive before. Now people are like, but why can't we remember and this and that? Because we are interdimensional beings. There's no difference between you and an angel except the fact that an angel doesn't have the redemptive power of the blood. Why did God not destroy Satan? God cannot destroy a spirit. He can only separate a spirit. There are different laws. And please, when I say God cannot destroy a spirit, I'm not removing his divine attributes and qualities of omnipotency, omniscience, and omnipresence. He's a divine quality of omnipotency because he created the lake of fire. 
please. Now, when watching this video on YouTube, by the way, it looks like it's been spliced together. So I think this is from another teaching that he's done. So the background music and things that I did not do that, <laughs> that's all part of their their thing, that the whole thing that they do to add the atmosphere or ambiance to it to give it more impact and more oomph, you know, kind of like a movie. Anyway, you just heard him say that. I wanted to play that. So you heard exactly from the horse's mouth that he said that. He said, the reason why you can't remember is because you're an interdimensional being, that you've had this conversation with God and that you pre-existed and going on about why God could not be uh, destroy Satan. And again, he, he does this whole double speak thing. Well, God cannot do that, but I'm not taking away from God's attributes. Okay. And then we, as I said, we're, we're at the four minute mark now is what we just talked about. About five minutes in, he talks about foreknowledge that takes place first before you were born, even before creation itself. God had a conversation with you and he had a foreknowledge or prognosis about us. So there's predestination, but before there's a predestination, there's a foreknowledge. So hold on. These are two separate and two different situations that takes place before birth. The first one that is taking place is what we call foreknew, foreknowledge, a prognosis, a relational knowledge. Even before you were born, before the creation of this world, before creation itself, he had a conversation with you. He foreknew you. So the word foreknew is God had a foreknowledge, a prognosis knowledge about us. Then he predestined. The word predestined means he created a destiny for us, a destination. And then we were sent on that assignment. You were sent on this earth for a mandate, an assignment, a purpose. No military officer, no military general sent somebody on an assignment without that person knowing what the assignment is. So when you discover your destiny and purpose on this earth, it's because you already knew it. You just had to discover it now because you are a spiritual person who is experiencing a natural disposition. If All I right, so that. I replayed some of that again from the beginning because I want you to understand what he's saying and it also aligns with and correlates with the service that I played for you a little bit ago where I played the clip of him talking about the chairs and doing the analogy and predestination and foreknowledge and trying to make it clear that he was not presenting Calvinism, but <laughs> he, he he wants to drive home that you pre-existed and I pre-existed and we had a conversation with God and all of these things. So he's going to reference Romans uh, 8.29 as he did. He references several verses, like I said, in the Old Testament and then in the New Testament. About six and a half minutes in, uh, he wants those listening to read read Jeremiah 1.5 a little bit differently. And he says there is a formation in the spiritual and a formation in the natural. And he says that God prepared a body for us in the natural. And we were known in heaven is what he says. And he refers to that, the Hebrew word yada, which he mentioned in that service. You may have caught that. Um, and that's a knowing, he says. And it's an experiential knowing is what he focuses on. He goes on to touch on John chapter 1, verse 1, uh, which is the preeminence of with Christ. And then he touches on John 8, 56 and 58. And he's using these verses. <laughs> he's using these very verses to basically say in that six and a half minute time frame that this supports the belief that we preexisted. And I thought, what in the world are you, where are you going with this? What, where are you going? Because these very verses, John 1, 1, let's read John 1, 1, for example. John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. I mean, this is talking about Jesus Christ. This is not a focus on us having some sort of pre-existence. This, if, if anything, this is one of the verses that's used, and, and I'm going to give you some sources and, and read some from some sources today for you to kind of help with this. If anything, this is affirming that Jesus is preeminent, and that really should be the focus of what we're doing when we're looking at these verses. But we're not trying to find ourselves in these. We're, try, we're, we're finding Christ. We're actually seeing that Christ is dis on display in Scripture. He is the focus. The Bible is Christ-centered. So we see in John 1, 1, this is the focus, is on Christ and His preeminence, not ours, His preeminence. And then he talks about John 8, 56 and 58. And this is the dialogue that Jesus is having with the people that are questioning him. And he says in John 8, 56, your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. And then the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old and you have seen Abraham. 
And the thing that they were wanting to stone Jesus for was because he was claiming to be God. Because in John chapter 8, verse 58, he says, Truly, truly, I tell you, Jesus declared before Abraham was born, I am. Well, in this bizarre teaching that Leon is doing, it he is ascribing these very verses to the verses that are ascribed to Christ in order to validate his belief that we were pre-existing. At seven minutes and 40 seconds into his video, he says it is illegal for a spirit to dwell on the earth without a body. And this is where about eight minutes in, he starts launching into this whole teaching that God prepared our body long before and we pre-existed. So let's listen to a little bit of that. Let's look at Jesus' life, the pre-existence with Christ. John chapter number 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Meaning that Christ existed before He was on this earth. John chapter number 8, verse 56. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, and he was glad. Verse 58, listen to this. Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So he said, before I was born, I existed. Now I'm not putting you in the place of Christ, I'm just looking in the case of Christ. It is illegal for a spirit to dwell on this earth without a body. Why do you think demons are hunting for a body? They need a body. Hebrews 10 verse 5, Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire but a body you prepared for me. The word prepared there means to frame and join together. He said, when I came in, you prepared a body. Let me tell you, you were alive long before your body was alive. God prepared your body for the function, for the purpose that you were created. Yeah, I think this is a good time to ask ourselves. When a scripture says, such as Hebrews 10, 5, that a body was prepared for, for Jesus, who was preeminent and and, etern- and has been eternal. He has been from before the foundations of the world. He, he is God. God is, has always been. I think we need to ask ourselves, are, are we supposed to ascribe the same passages that are ascribed to Christ to ourselves? Because that seemed like what he was doing. He was drawing the conclusion that, well, because a body was prepared for Christ and it was framed, as he said, framed and structured, that means that you existed just like Christ did. He even says in the in the um, the timestamp, he has the, the timestamps marked in this. And that very one I just played for you is titled Pre-Existence with Christ. That part of it is called Pre-Existence with Christ. And the next one was the law of bodies on earth, which he said it is. He said it's illegal for a spirit to be in the earth without a body. And then God preparing your body. So he, he's taking passages that are ascribed to Christ and creating this teaching or agreeing with this teaching. He's not creating it because it's been around. I'll show you in just a minute that there's other religious systems that believe this. He's taking this teaching and he's telling people, telling believers, professing believers, you pre-existed. You, you have always existed because of Jeremiah 1.5 and Romans 8.29 and, and all these different passages and that God's prepared a body for you and it's illegal for you to be here as a spirit. So God prepared a body for you, just like in John 1.1, 1, 1, when, when it talks about that the, uh, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God and John 8.56 and Hebrews 10.5. So you can take all of these and just apply them to yourself. Is, is that what we're supposed to do? Well, when when you begin to go down this road, where can this lead? Because this can lead into other errors. Now, this is not a Christian doctrine, by the way. This is not something that, that we ascribe to as far as believing that we're pre-existent. And we're going to look at some of these passages and, and, again, look at some sources for this that I think will be most helpful. But one thought that came to mind was, would this not make us eternal as far as, and even preeminent, that that would make us existing when God did? And then that would make us just like God, right? 
And I think that this type of teaching can really lead us astray and it can be self-centered. Again, when we read scripture, we're not supposed to be necessarily looking for ourselves, though we know that the, the Bible was, there's parts of it that are written to us and that there it was written for us at the same time. There's certain parts of it that were, were written for us to apply to our lives. There's descriptive passages, there's prescriptive passages, and we need to be aware of that when we're looking at scripture so that way we uh, apply them appropriately appropriately in our lives. And that way we're not applying something that's descriptive as prescriptive or something that's talking about Jesus that is describing something that is pertaining to Christ, pertaining to his earthly ministry. So I, I found some articles I think that will be helpful to us in in having a, some understanding. And before I get to that, I just want to point out a couple of things that are uh, similar in some other belief systems, because you may be listening to this and thinking, well, I don't really see any problem with this. It doesn't sound uh, that bad. Maybe you're thinking that. Uh, but I do want to point out a couple, uh, two different belief systems that agree with this. Uh, one of them that actually agrees with this is the is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Mormonism believes in this. They believe in pre-mortality. This is actually off their website uh, and it titled Pre-mortality. And this is an overview. I'll read a little bit of this to you. So they say pre-mortality refers to our life before we were born on this earth. In our pre-earth life, we lived in the presence of our heavenly Heavenly Father as his spirit children, and we did not have a physical body. It goes on to say, in this premortal existence, we attended a council with Heavenly Father's other spiritual children. At that council, Heavenly Father presented his great plan of happiness. In harmony with the plan of happiness, the premortal Jesus Christ, the firstborn Son of the Father in the Spirit, covenanted to be the Savior. Those who followed Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ were permitted to come to the earth to experience mortality and progress toward eternal life. And they go on to talk about Lucifer, who was another spirit son of God, rebelled against the plan and sought to destroy the agency of man. He became Satan, and he and his followers were cast out of heaven and denied the privileges of receiving a physical body and experiencing mortality. Throughout our premortal life, we developed our identity and increased our spiritual capabilities. Blessed with the gift of agency, we made important decisions such as the decision to follow Heavenly Father's plan. These decisions affected our life then and now. We grew in intelligence and learned to love the truth, and we prepared to come to the earth where we would continue to progress. So that's the Mormonism belief about preexistence. And then there's another one just to throw this out here for you to consider. Um, spiritual preexistence. This is found on Christian Science Sentinel. And they believe in preexistence. They even quote John eight fifty eight before Abraham was, I am, one of the same verses that Leon Dupree references. And they said probably one of the more dynamic yet neglected truths that Jesus gave the world was that of spiritual preexistence of man. He once enraged his hearers by saying, before Abraham was, I am. And in prayer, he declared, you love me before the foundation of the world. Christian science interprets the master's words to mean that his real selfhood, the Christ, existed before the human Jesus was born. According to science, man is made in God's image. He is spiritual and he reflects his maker exactly and perpetually. Then man is not immortal, beginning as a material embryo and growing on to fulfill the maturing and deteriorating action of mortal belief. The real man is an immortal existing in divine mind as its idea and having neither beginning nor ending. He coexists with the mind whose knowing gives him being. This truth the master understood and acted upon. And they go on to quote Mary Baker Eddy, who was the founder of Christian Science, by the way, in this. And it's a longer article, but essentially uh, Christian Science also believes in preexistence. And so we see two different belief systems here that do not agree with uh, biblical Christianity that are uh, affirming pre-existence. And let me point this out too. I mean, I've had some people that were in the former New Age that have even mentioned to me about celestial amnesia and that this uh, coincides with some of the beliefs of the New Age. So this, is a, this, this teaching can be problematic because it can lead people in a direction that is going against biblical teaching. Now, when you begin to look online to get a better understanding about what the Bible does say about preexistence of souls, for example, gotquestions.org has um, um, an article on their website that talks about this, and I wanted to mention that. They actually make note that the Bible says nothing about the 
pre-existence of souls because this is a man-made idea with no basis in truth. And they say the Bible makes it clear that every human being is a new, is a unique creation of God, citing Genesis 2-7, one of the very passages that was cited by Leon as well as Jeremiah 1-5 and Zechariah chapter 12, verse 1. They go on to talk about the concept of pre-existence cannot be followed to its logical conclusion, and that there's one of three categories that are believed if someone holds to pre-existence. The first one could be is that the soul has always existed. The second is the soul was created at a previous time and waited incorporeal until it could inhabit a body on earth. And the third belief or option is that the soul inhabited another body in the past and transmigrated to its current body, which that goes along with reincarnation. And they say if number Number one is true, which is the soul has always existed, that the human beings are also part of God, uncreated and self-determined. And this concept is clearly contrary to the Bible's claims that there is no other God but Yahweh. And this is cited in several verses that they reference, such as Genesis 5, 1, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, 1 John chapter 4, verse 12, Malachi chapter 2, verse 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 5 and 6. And they go on to talk about the others as well, versus uh, the second and the third option. As I go down and read this to you, just the, what they cite in here, they said, the Bible refers to death as a time when a person was gathered to his people. This indicates that at death, a person's soul leaves his body and joins those who have gone before him. And then they go on to cite Luke 16, 19 through 31, about the, the rich man and Lazarus. And they also make this point in here, which is an, a good point. They said, neither of those souls in Luke 16, re-inhabited another body, nor is there any indication that their souls had pre-existed. They each received the consequences of their life's choices. At the resurrection, we will be reunited with our original bodies in glorified form. If pre-existence and another body were possible, which body would the soul inhabit? And that goes back to the third option, uh, uh, which seems to allude to reincarnation, which, to be fair, Leon was not saying that. I believe it seems that he holds to the first belief, which is that we have always existed. They conclude with this article on God questions.org by saying Jesus is the only baby born into this world who existed before his birth, citing John 1, 1, John 17, 5, and Colossians 1, 17. When John the Baptist saw Jesus, he declared, this is the one I meant when I said, a man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. That's in John chapter 1, verse 30. John was conceived six months before Jesus, yet he indicated that Jesus existed before he did. If John had preexisted, he could not have made that claim claim. Jesus as God existed as one with the Father since the beginning. And they even cite John eight fifty seven through 58, which that affirms when he says, before Abraham was, I am. And Jesus affirming he is God. His human birth was a unique event, never replicated on any level. God did know our names before we were created because he is omniscient and dwells outside of time. But we are each individuals. We are unique souls placed in unique bodies. And we will all stand before God to give an account of the unique earthly lives we were given. So I thought that that article was helpful. There was another article I came across that was on the website called CARM. And this is a very helpful website I found a few times when answering some biblical questions. There is an article, and I'll share the links to both of these below. It said, did we exist with God before we were born on earth? Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 46 through 47 is actually one of the ones they look at here. They, it says, however, the spiritual is not first, but the natural and then the spiritual. The first man is from the earth, uh, earthly. The second is from he the second man is from heaven. The context is dealing with the resurrection of the body. Beginning with verse 35, Paul asks the question, how then are the dead raised? Then Paul goes on to explain the resurrection of the believer and how the natural body must die before the spiritual one is raised. Paul is simply describing the proper order of existence. First comes the natural body, then comes the spiritual or the resurrected body. If we lived in a previous existence, then Paul could have said something like, first comes our spiritual body, then our natural body, then our resurrected body. But uh, he doesn't say that. The second verse that they look at is Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. So I wanted to share this with you since Leon cited that one. This article says on Karm, one verse that is commonly used is Jeremiah 1, 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. But this verse is not talking about preexistence. It is talking about God's ordination and appointment of Jeremiah to be a prophet to his nation. And they do cite about how the Mormons have their belief of preexistence. In this 
verse, uh, for example, they also make the point of noting how God uses the word no. For example, the Bible says that God only knows believers, not unbelievers. Then that's referencing John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And the Lord knows those who are his. That's in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. God knows who everyone is, and this is what how this article concludes, that he is omniscient, and that's one of his divine attributes. But God is showing us that when he says he knows us, he is referring to a salvation relationship. And that even goes back to Matthew 7, 21 through 23, which I think I've touched on before. That's one of the most terrifying passages I, I know of scripture, uh, of talking about when people will say, you know, did I not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do all these mighty works in your name, Jesus, Lord, Lord, you know, basically basically acting like they know God, but they don't know. They don't know Him. And He makes that clear that they do not know Him. Even though they did all these these things, that's not what... That's not how they had a relationship with God, and they didn't have one to begin with. And He will send them away. So, again, what should be our focus when we're looking at Scripture and we're trying to see these things? Because, again, a lot of times I believe that the problem can lie with some of these teachings that are like this about preexistence and and such that we're, we're crossing into areas that the Scripture does not plainly teach. And we're reading into the passage. And I think it does promote man-made teachings and also man-exalted teachings that really points back to self. And it's not glorifying Christ in the process, as I've stated before. The, some of the verses that he pointed to in what he said are actually pointing to Christ, not us. They're not to actually uh, affirm and to and lead a rabbit trail down to his to the teaching that we preexisted. What we should be focusing on when we're reading scripture again is the preeminence of Christ that he has been from the from before the foundation of the world. He has always been. He has always existed and he has seen all throughout the Old Testament and revealed in the New Testament. There's one more article I'll share the link to. It's from blueletterbible.org. It says what does Jesus's preexistence mean? So I'll share the link to that below that it's a very short article but it touches on several of the Bible verses that we've already touched on to help you see the preeminence of Christ. That should be our focus. And one other question, you know, to think I thought of when listening to this teaching was if we pre-existed with God and had a conversation with God, where were the souls who were operating in wickedness and have rejected God? And if we pre-existed with God, would that not lead to a teaching that could say we that we were preeminent with God? And then that make again, it, it goes down into this this path that is really not a, it's not a biblical path to walk down. It's not it's not sound and it leads into teachings that really can lead into further error. I, and with that, I wanted to close with this today on this episode. I was listening to a teaching uh, and I encourage you to listen to it. It's about the attributes of God by Steve Lawson. And one of the attributes of God that he talks about is foreknowledge. And this is very appropriate for this episode because of one of the passages that Leon focused on, which was Romans 8, 29. And this is one of the very verses that Steve Lawson focuses on in this study of the attributes of God when talking about the foreknowledge of God. So I wanted to listen to a couple of clips of this. It's about a 23 minute long uh, study on this particular attribute of foreknowledge. So I just want to play a couple of clips for you before we part ways today. And I also wanted to say this. Again, you don't have to be a Calvinist to have a problem with Leon's teaching or to uh, not affirm his teaching or even to reject his teaching. It has nothing to do with that. And I understand that there's words within this that are going to be talked about, such as election and predestination. And that would involve doing some personal Bible reading and talking to your pastor about those things so you can get a better understanding because those are biblical terms. And we need to make sure that we understand biblical terms, even if we don't like them. We need to understand them because they're in scripture. And so those are very much things that we need to make sure that we have a proper understanding on that we're trying to get understanding on and we're not avoiding them because they're associated, we think, with a a particular belief system. They're in scripture. And so we need to make sure that we have an understanding of them and that we're also at the same time not creating additional doctrines such as pre-existence 
and we're negating what's already in scripture by creating something that's not clearly found in scripture. So <laughs> at any rate, let's listen to some of this. And, and also, I, again, I would encourage you to examine the scriptures and seek out solid teaching for yourself that is not muddying the waters and not muddying the understanding of, of scripture um, f- for you personally as a believer. So let's listen to a little bit of what Steve Lawson had to say about foreknowledge, because I think that this will help us in our understanding of Romans 8.29. There's a lot of misunderstanding um, on the subject of the foreknowledge of God, and some people's understanding of foreknowledge is this, that God is looking down the proverbial tunnel of time to see what will men do with His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And based upon what God foresees, God will then make a reciprocal choice towards them. If God sees in the future that someone will believe upon His Son, Jesus Christ, God foresees that, and when He foresees that person believing in Christ, God will then, from eternity past, uh, ordain them unto salvation. Unfortunately, that is 180 degrees in the wrong direction. That is a, a, a significant misinterpretation of Scripture, and for three reasons. Number one, God has never looked into the future and learned anything. God is omniscient. We've already covered that attribute. God knows all things. God never learns anything. God never looks into the future and ever sees anyone do anything that He has not already foreordained. Second, If all God does is look into the future to see what someone will do, and that's all that foreknowledge is, this is what God will foresee. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each one of us has turned to his own way. All God will see is that no one will believe in His Son, Jesus Christ. The Bible teaches the total depravity of the human heart. The Bible teaches the bondage of the will. And the Bible teaches that Repentance and saving faith is a gift that God must bestow to the guilty sinner. No one can believe on their own. But third, foreknowledge does not mean foresight, because in Romans 8 and verse 29 it says, for those whom He foreknew. Let me tell you two things about this, which I guess would be number three and four on our list. It's a personal pronoun, for those whom He foreknew. It doesn't say what He foresaw. It says whom He foreknew. God is not foreseeing events. God is not foreseeing circumstances. God is not foreseeing conversion experiences in Romans 8, 29. It doesn't say what He foresaw. It says whom He foreknew. So number four on why that is wrong is a gross misunderstanding of what the word foreknowledge means. The word foreknowledge in the original language, and we would never know this in the English, the word foreknowledge is a verb with a prefix that is placed in front of the main verb. The main verb is gnosko, which means to know. To know in a personal love relationship, to love in a very intimate way. It speaks of the love between a husband and a wife in a very physical relationship. To know that spouse as you would know no one else in the world. The prefix that is put in front of gnosko is Pro, P-R-O, which means before. It sounds like pre. The word is prognosco. Pro means beforehand. The word foreknowledge, prognosco, means those whom God previously chose to love with a distinguishing love in ways that He does not love others. I have one more clip to play from this teaching about 16 and a half minutes in. But I just wanted to interject here. I will have the link for this in the description below for this episode. But I just wanted to play this for you real quick. And again, I encourage you to listen to it. Listen to the teaching he has on the attributes of God. What does foreknowledge mean? It means that before time began, before the foundation of the world, in eternity past, 
God drew a circle around your name and He singled you out and He chose to love you and He set His heart upon you with blazing, burning love and affection. He, he entered into a saving love relationship with you by His eternal covenant from before the foundation of the world, and He wrote your name in His Lamb's book of life before time began. You are mine, and I have set my heart upon you, and I love you with an everlasting love. That's what the word foreknowledge means. For those of us who are in Christ, we belong to an uh, all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present God who loves us and uh, foreknew us and predestined us. And it brings us more comfort and joy and peace when we look at Scripture in the right context, increases our fellowship with God, and it helps us to see the love of God and, and His sovereign plan and His sovereign ways. And that's what I would encourage you to focus on is the Word of God and what it understands, and it testifies of Christ. And we need to uphold His Word in the proper way and not go looking for things that aren't there in Scripture so that we can add more value to ourselves because ultimately our value is found in Christ. It's not found in anything else or anything that we could conjure up or we could think or try to conceive about ourselves including a teaching such as pre-existence. But our value is found in Christ. Our value is found in what He did on the cross for us. Our value is found in who He is. And it is His work alone that has, that has allowed us to be called children of God, the finished work of Christ on the cross that we rejoice in and should rejoice in daily and knowing that His plan has been established and it will be fulfilled because He's sovereign in everything every situation in everything god is sovereign so i hope that this has been helpful today i know it was it's a it's an odd teaching to even touch on but and i wanted to talk about it just because it came up and uh, i thought it was worth talking about especially when scripture is being appropriated to to it and so we could see what scripture actually says and again go back and continue to do bible study on this and as always i hope that you find this podcast helpful and it acts as a supplement to what you should already be uh, doing as far as personal bible study and also being plugged into a local church and being able to talk to uh, your pastor and the elders and and to be able to learn and glean uh, in your Bible study, in the local church, and in your private time. I don't want this to be your be-all, end-all as far as your information. I want this podcast to be a supplement to you and to help you, to spurn you, to do your personal Bible study and stay engaged in your local church and that you're growing in the grace of the knowledge of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So until next time, when we tackle another topic, be blessed today by the truth of God's Word. Thanks for joining me on this podcast. If you would like to connect with me, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. You can also email me at dawn at lovesubscribe.com. If you've enjoyed this podcast, I hope you'll consider leaving a five-star review and that you'll even share it with others who may benefit from the information provided. If you also like reading, you can subscribe to my blog at lovesubscribe.com, where I release weekly blogs that correlate with the podcast episodes. I've enjoyed our time together today, and I look forward to our next time together as we dive into biblical truths, current topics, and where we grow in loving the Word and loving the one who is the Word, Jesus Christ. Blessings to you.